Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. We continue with our 2022 college football preview series. Our college football previews are presented this summer by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. It's a privilege to have on the show with me today, Coach Matt Walter in his eighth year at Northwestern Oklahoma State. Coach, the Rangers to a nine last season. That comes off a year in which you didn't get a season at all. So uh, it, I'm, I imagine it's kind of tough to think, keep things going, keep everyone focused through 2020 when you know you don't get to play and then come back into another year. What are your takeaways from last year? Um, yeah, that's it's rough. Everybody had to deal with it in Division Two anyway. I know um, some some schools played four games in the spring and tried to you know do things like that, and, and we try to do it too. Um, that spring of 2020, if I if I could go back and do it again, I'd have, I'd have kept it. Again, you didn't know what was going to happen, but I'd have gone gone and had a normal spring. Um, I, I would have kept strength and conditioning the same. You know, we shortened the strength and conditioning cycle to um, prep up and ramp up for like a, a four game spring season, and um, I think it hurt physical development. Again, I don't know. I mean, I've talked to other coaches and what they did, and you know, for some of them this worked and that worked and, and what whatever. But for us, I. Uh, we, we missed out. We've always had a great strength conditioning program, and uh, I think it hurt our strength conditioning program and our development, physical development with the players with with kind of how we adjusted the schedule. Um, that's the one thing I would go back and do differently. Um, now, you know, you still got to handle handle the business and, and um, you know, going into the season, you know, you didn't know with, with all the turnover that you have or had in that situation that we had anyway, um, didn't know, you know, how we – you know, how we responded, how we'd be, you know, obviously you always think optimistically and we had some, we had some talent and, um, you know, it just uh, didn't, didn't go our way. A lot of times we had a lot of close games and I know early on in the year we lost East central in overtime. And I believe, uh, you know, they went on to have a pretty good year. I just believe if, if uh, you know, some things went our way earlier, you know, maybe it was a different turn in the season, but it is what it is, and, and we had to, you know, revamp what we're going to do and, and how we're going to do it this year, and and uh, get that turned around because that's not acceptable. And coach, I was wondering about that because I I know there's probably no magic formula, but 2020 was be, almost beyond unprecedented as to how to deal with those situations for college football. So I'm glad that that's something we talk about now in the past, and we're not talking about it right now. We look sure. at something from last year though, uh, Tanner Clarkson who was a junior or is a junior coming back for you this season. Pretty good pretty good year for him at the quarterback spot. Uh, threw for more than 2600 yards and, and and led the team and he'll be back for you this year. Yeah, Tanner's back. Um you know, just another year in the system, another another year of development for him both physically and mentally and and uh you know, really excited. He had a great spring, uh, very efficient. Um he almost it's starting to take for granted how how well he knows the offense and what what we're trying to do with him. Um, so uh, I think that uh, having him come back is definitely a key to whatever you know whatever we're gonna um, see this season. Coach, in with his twenty six hundred plus passing yards, and I know you had uh, close to twenty seven hundred on the season. It was a greater than two to one ratio passing to rushing. Was that by design or just something that came about over the course of the season? Uh, that happens when you play behind a lot. Um, okay. A lot. okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, made a little joke about that, but it's serious and that's not what you want. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I know the air raid guys, Mike Leach and, and coach mummy and those guys, they want, they want to throw the ball every play. Um, you know, and they, they you know, we would like to be more balanced than throwing two to one. Um, I'd like to be, you know, 50, 50 in terms of that. But at the same time, you know, we, we teach our guys, you know, take, take what they give us and um, keep moving on. So, you know, move change 10 yards at a time. That's, that's the goal, no matter how you can do it. I understand coach. One other thing about the offense really quickly. Uh, it looked like, looked like there might be some turnover on the offensive line this year. And, and you go back to signing day, 27 signees for the Rangers this season of those seven of them, offensive linemen. Uh, what does your, what does your line look like right now? Um, well, I I like I like it. I, we had a great spring. Um, what what we didn't publicize is all the guys we got mid year. Um, you know, we got five mid year O linemen as well. So uh, transfers in. So we um, you know we definitely revamped our O line. It's uh, completely new except for Josh Baker, really, and uh, Javion Combs. Um, 
and Josh started 10 games for us and, and is definitely the leader up front. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, we're just doing it, you know, it's a new O line. So we're just <laughs> doing, it, d- doing the, the process there with that O line. And, um, you know, everybody knows that's the key to the offense. You know, we're talking about running the ball more, you know, that's, that's part of it. You know, as long as you're not playing from behind, you know, and having to catch up, you know, you'll be able to run the ball and that's the goal. And um, I'll tell you this, we're going to be very large up front, uh, very large. Well, yeah, that's, hey, listen, there's there's no difference there than, than what we've seen from your defensive line in times past too. I mean, that's uh, that's been a big deal. You, <laughs> Coach, you've, you've been able to coach some really big guys on that defensive line, so it'll be cool to see that on the, on the O-line as well. We're here on the Summit today previewing the 2022 college football season. Our previews are presented this summer by the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma with Matt Walter again in his eighth year of the program in Alva. Coach, let me bring up something about defense really quickly then, and, and I – you know, allude to that, that you had some fantastic defensive linemen and defensive players in, in your time there in Alva. Uh, no different last year. Brian Holiday, a first team, all Great American Conference player, had 14 tackles for loss, five and a half of those as sacks. Uh, also had good uh, play from uh, a linebacker, too, who was a wide receiver in high school. I know he played both ways in high school, Wacey Williams who was able to uh, put to, together in, in just eight games played, 7.0 tackles per game, and that was good enough to be in the top ten in the conference as well. Yeah, um, you know, Brian, Brian's been a mainstay for us going into his fifth year. Well, actually, his sixth year, he's a COVID senior. So um, he's uh, actually about to earn his master's degree as well. Um, Brian's been, been um, you know, a real leader for us for the last few years and a and, uh, very dominant force up front. I'd like to – you know, talking to the D.C. and the defensive coaches, staff, they, you know, we'd like to not play him as much, if that makes any, any sense. We had to play him a lot last year in the sense that we didn't get to rotate him out as much as, as we'd like to um, hopefully develop some depth there. But, yeah, Brian, I can't speak enough, highly enough of him. Um, you know, he's, uh, you know, as a nose guard, having five and a half sacks is pretty good. So yes. uh, I think he's uh, – one of those guys that you got a game plan around, and and I know I know teams do, and um, you know he's again he's a force there in the middle, um, and with Wacy, you mentioned Wacy. Yeah, I funny I was recruiting him out of high school, and um, I just I knew I wanted him on my team. I didn't know what he was gonna play. You know, <laughs> I, didn't, I had no idea what he was gonna play. Just hey, I need you on this team, and uh, we recruited him and, and signed him as a wide receiver. Um, very quickly realized he was too, you know not too aggressive, but you know, his, his aggression and, and the way his style of play, you know, we thought it would translate well to defense, and um, it sure has, you know, as a, for – he had a really good freshman year. So, hopefully he uh, – with the sophomore sophomore campaign coming up, he uh, follows that up with a, with a great year. So, um, you know, he's uh, grown a lot. He's a big, big kid, uh, you know, huge frame. Um, you know, I'm not going to compare him to Maurice Wright, but he is playing Maurice's position. So he's, you know, kind of the, the next guy in line, so to speak. Um, so, and he's done a great job, done a great job. Can't speak highly enough of him either. And he transitioned well, like he, he had no, no issues with moving the defense at all. And, and uh, it wasn't always smooth, you know, he had his growing pains, but um, he handled it real well. Well, that's those are things that are always good to hear when you have players that are willing to do what you ask them to do. And and honestly, Coach, uh, with as many great players as you've had there again in your time at Northwestern, um, to compare one to one that's been there two or three years before, that's kind of tough anyway. Well, I mean, there yeah, there's I, been I, some, there's been some big solid defensive players on. Yeah, I really wasn't trying Rangers. to compare them to Reese. <laughs> that's that's what position he has to play. So. Yeah. Uh, they're different players. They're definitely different players. So, right. Um, it just, uh, yeah, you know, you go down the line with Dakota Driscoll, Aaron Barnes, um, Joby St. Fleur, those guys that we've had on defense have, you know, put a lot of talent over there. And, and um, those guys, you know, have, have had some great seasons. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, what Wacey does with his sophomore year and how he follows that up. Coach, one, a couple more questions really quickly. And thank you again for taking time with us here on the summit. Um, you, you've been able to beat your rival in Southwestern the last four years. 
Uh, I know that's good. Uh, got a couple of wins back-to-back years over Southern Nazarene. Kind of a little bit more of a, a, a maybe a lesser rival. I don't know. It goes back to CSFL days. Uh, a, few, a few years back, some folks will remember those days and some rivalry games there. And I know that uh, in, in your time when you were at the Rangers, you know, NAI days, those, those were – were very big. You you were very solid in your time there. You're getting the wins at the at the end against some rivals, but it's been uh, tough starts. Uh, like you were mentioning, even just a, a moment ago, in in the last four years, uh, it's been tough. And I know the schedule seems to be almost front loaded. We'll talk about that at the end. But uh, it's it's been a tough tough start to the season, even though you finished strong. Yeah, I mean, I think the I don't know. It's uh. <laughs> I'd love to have the answers. You know, I should write a book if I did. I would write a book if I had all those answers. Uh, I'll buy that book, Coach, when that happens. I promise. We, we definitely do need to start faster. It's uh, start faster this season, start faster in games, in each game. Um, I think, you know, sometimes the guys – and we, we stress that. We emphasize that every – I mean, daily about starting fast, starting fast. And, um, you know, I think just sometimes guys trying to get their feet wet. You know, we played with a um, – you know, an inordinate amount of guys that play in college ball the first for the first time ever um, last year in the first two uh, first, you know, first game. And then, you know, as it rolls, just them getting their feet wet. And, um, you know, I'm not I know we're not the only ones that deal with that. Other people do with that, too. So, you know, those guys just got to get prepared and, and, be, and know that they can play the game right away or we wouldn't put them in. Um, you know, I think some, some of it is just developing that confidence within those young guys and, and tell, you know, let them understand that they are ready to play the game right away and, um, you know, go, you know, just move forward from there. Cause you, you're right. We keep starting the years, um, kind of slow and they're finishing really strong. We do get better throughout the year quite a bit. And yeah, the schedule does, the schedule affects that for sure. If you're front end loaded a lot, but, um, I do believe we, we, we continue to get better throughout the season. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing I'm finding and, and I, yeah, I haven't really talked to a lot of coaches about this, this particular thing, but, um, you know, the NCAA keeps limiting how much we practice, limiting how much we do more and more and more, and it is affecting our guys being ready in time. Um, you know, so you're, you're almost playing games to get ready, um, at this point with, yeah. with how the, how the rules are changing. I'm sure you've heard that from other coaches. Cause I mean, it's just wild. How, and we, in, in our big coaches meetings in January, you know, we talk about that like at length, like how um, the, the the more they're limiting our preparation, the more it's like okay, they're not even they're they're not quite ready to play uh, right. because they keep limiting, keep limiting, keep limiting, and at some point, you know, these guys are are just not not you're playing games to get ready to play games, um, not maybe not, not conditioning wise, just. Uh, conditioning from getting used to getting hit and, and um, you know, just the overall reps that you need. Um, so that's something we have to adjust and adapt to. And, and, and we have figured out different ways to, to work that here in the last year and, and really emphasize that, Hey, um, the less physical preparation we get, we gotta, we gotta replace that with the mental preparation and, and, you know, it involves more walkthroughs and more, you know, more meetings instead of, uh, you know, all the physical hitting. Um, so, and, and I know, um, guys will say, well, the NFL doesn't do it. The NFL guys are, are definitely, they're professionals. They're ready for that. They're yeah. Well, some of these guys <laughs> coming out of uh, a eight man school in Oklahoma playing 11 man school for the, or 11 man football for the, some of them for the first time. And we've right. got some great eight man players. I'm talking about great eight man players here. Uh, but you know, it's just, and then all of a sudden, okay, well you got 20, 27 days and, 24 practices and only six of them can be hit, you know, padded practices or, you know, full contact practices and having those guys ready is not, you know, a lot of times not feasible. It's just not enough time for some of those guys. Um, but, you know, it's now, now you just adjust and your adjustment is more meetings, more, more walkthroughs and, and trying to get them ready that way. Um, Cause I do understand the health aspect of it, but uh, you know, it's just a change in the landscape. And I mean, you hear about it all the time. And uh, we think that we found a, a better way of doing things um, here this year. So excited about excited to see that that put forward, Coach. I appreciate that. That that was um, that's that's really a good explanation. I, I like that a lot. I may even use that too, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, playing games to get ready to play games, which is uh, very much a valid point, and and that is there. Well, uh, to and to your point too, one of the things is that you are in a hotbed for eight-man football in the oh, yeah. northwestern part of the state of Oklahoma. I mean, there's a lot of strong eight-man football there, but that's a, that's a great point. 
Yeah, and I mean, I like, kind of use this as an example. Our first game is a conference game, and this is for the whole GAC. Mm-hmm. So all the, all, I mean, the, every other school has the same issue we do. Um, so you're playing right away is basically playoffs start right away. Yeah. Right? Yes. You think about these other sports, baseball, uh, basketball, they play a ton of games, which is awesome because their sport, that's what their sport's supposed to do, right? Um, dealing with that with my sons right now, they got double headers every night. It's crazy like how much baseball's played. But, <laughs> uh, you know, you get those kind of, I don't want to say warm up games, but games to gauge where you're at, games to see who can actually play, games to see, you know, who's ready to go. Um, and for all of us, all of us, all 12 of us in our conference, I mean, you're, you're playing a game right away that counts with a player you've never seen really play in a college game sometimes. And now you're trying, okay, after the first game, you may decide he can't play or, or isn't ready to play, not can't play, isn't ready to play yet. Right. Um, and, and you just don't know from scrimmaging, from inner squad scrimmaging a lot of times because um, the pressure is not there. So we just don't have, we don't get preseason games or scrimmages to um, do that. And, and I understand why for sure. It's just different. It's just yeah. different for for our sport and the way it's done. Well, coach, then and, I'll, it, and it all leads back to starting fast for us. Yeah. Is that we got to find we got to find another way to get them ready as opposed to uh, a scrimmage or preseason games or or non conference games because we don't get any of that. And and it is what it is. And everybody else is dealing with it in our conference too. So um, you know we just got to find the formula. Well, I, and I agree with you, Coach. And I, again, I, I'm thankful for that uh, for that thought. Uh, then I'll, I'll wrap up our time with this. You open the season on a on a Thursday at Southern Arkansas. New head coach there, and Coach Smiley in his first season of the program. And then uh, back at home on September 10th. That's a Saturday, taking on Henderson State. Yeah, um, you know, got got a long road trip. First game out the gate. Um, sometimes that's really good to get out of the way, especially with a younger team, because now they know. They know how that how that works, uh, you know, excited. Uh, you know, I don't know a lot about Coach Smiley. I mean, I know he's at uh, uh, Northwestern State, Louisiana, I believe, last year. Um, and, uh, you know, their D.C. comes from uh, Trinity Valley uh, Community College. So that's kind of kind of where the, the scope of what I really truly know about them. Um, so and, and going down to play in, in Magnolia is always tough. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the – tough hostile atmosphere and and we're get get it out of the gate. Um, then come back to one of the, you know, perennial powerhouses in our conference with Henderson at home. Um, you know, we usually play them pretty good at home and, and, uh, you know, I, I look forward to that challenge. I know our guys are, you know, we, we count, have the countdown and our guys are right now. I'm surprised you can't hear them. They're in the weight room right now. The weight room's right. (laughs) We hear a little bit of them. (laughs) Right. Can you hear it? Hear the weight sound? Just a little bit. Yeah. 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 That's a right here. Workout day on the other side of the wall. So, um, you know, guys, we're talking about, we're talking about, you know, how many days the countdown clock is in there and, and guys are getting, getting juiced and ready to go. Well, coach, that is fantastic. I, I have to tell you, I really appreciate the the time you've given me today as uh, we're pre- previewing the Northwestern Rangers here, college football previews on uh, the summit and Midwest sports net presented by the Choctaw nation of Oklahoma coach, Matt Walter success to you and to the Rangers this year. And, and again, thank you so much for, for giving us some time today and, and uh, may your summer go well. All right, Joey. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me and uh, have a good summer. <laughs>